Hi everyone, this is your intro um, video to 1B5 or just 1B part two in general, which is simplifying rational expressions. So in this video, all I'm gonna do is simplify rational expressions. I'm not gonna multiply or divide yet. Um, on page two of your 1B part two packet, you'll see a couple of notes that I just want you to read over and I'll highlight a few important things right now. So a rational expression, which is what we're gonna be dealing with this entire um, section of this unit, is an expression where both the numerator and denominator are polynomials. So in the last unit, you just looked at a polynomial like this, or you looked at a polynomial like that. Now you're looking at a fraction that has a polynomial both on the top and the bottom. So here's just a couple of examples. When we simplify rational expressions, what we're looking for is we're dividing by common factors top and bottom. Think back to whenever you learned how to simplify a fraction. If I saw a fraction like 12 over 16, I know that both 12 and 16 have a factor of four in it. So this is technically equal to three times four over four times four. And what you would do to simplify this fraction and make an equivalent fraction is you would divide by four on top and bottom. And what that does is technically it just gets rid of that four and you're left with three over four. So along those same lines, when we simplify rational expressions, which is what I'm gonna focus on in this lesson, is we look at the factored forms and we look for the same factor top and bottom and divide by that factor top and bottom to get what's left. So in the same way where I divided by four and got rid of the four top and bottom to get three over four, in this one, x plus five is a factor on the top and on the bottom, so I can get rid of it top and bottom. The last thing on this page has to do with domain. Something that we all know is that we can never divide by zero. So when the bottom is equal to zero, when the bottom is equal to zero, that means that that is a value that's excluded from the domain. So here I set x squared minus seven x plus six equal to zero, so I have to factor it. x minus six times x plus one is equal to that. So that means, in this one, x equals 6 would make this equal to 0. And in this one, x equals 1 would make it equal to 0. So that means in order for this rational expression to have a result, x cannot equal 6 or 1. So I'm going to go into that a little bit more on the next page. So I'm going to do examples 2 and 4, and then hopefully number 5 as well. So example two says simplify to a form to form an equivalent rational expression. So when it says simplify the rational expression, what you're thinking is factor and find a common factor top and bottom. So y squared plus 3y minus 10, I want to factor. And I would split 3 into 5y minus 2y. So divide by y, divide by negative 2, and I get y times y plus 5 minus 2 times y plus 5, and I get y plus 5 times y minus 2. I factor the top, and I also factor the bottom. y squared minus 25, that's a difference of squares. This is gonna be, in this unit, difference of squares needs to be like right off the head. So y squared minus 25 is y plus five, y minus five. So now I can rewrite this fraction, this rational expression. The top was equal to y plus five times y minus two. And the bottom was equal to y plus 5, y minus 5. So now I notice that y plus 5 is a factor in both the top and the bottom. So I can divide by y plus 5 top and bottom. And when I do that, I'm left with y minus 2 over y minus 5. And that is a simplified form.
The other part we want to look at here is what values are excluded from the domain. When you're thinking about domain, you want to think about what makes the bottom equal to zero. So I factor it, y plus five, y minus five. So what makes y plus five equal zero? That would be y equals negative five. So you'd say y can't equal negative five or y minus five equal to zero would be positive five. So this is your domain restrictions. This is a really popular thing on the SAT. So when you're looking for what values are excluded from the domain, that means that you can't have y, you can't have the bottom equal to zero. So you can't have y equals five or negative five. So this in total is your answer there. All right, I'm gonna look at number four down here. So when I simplify this one, I see two difference of squares here. So I'm gonna factor both of these completely. There is a step in between that you could factor out from, but I'm gonna do this fully. So I've got C to the fourth minus 16, which would be equal to C squared plus four and C squared minus four. And then c squared plus 4 would be equal to c plus 2, c minus 2. Oh, I should have i's there, shouldn't I? c squared minus 4 would be equal to c plus 2, c minus 2, no i's. And then over here, c squared minus 4 is equal to C plus two, C minus two. Notice C squared minus four was also in this intermediate step. That's where I'm saying you could have probably canceled out there, but we're gonna keep going right now. So the top is equal to C plus two I, C minus two I, C plus two, C minus two. And the bottom is equal to C plus two, C minus two. So now once I've factored both the top and the bottom, I look for what I can cross off. I can cross off C plus two and I can cross off C minus two. Now, since both items in the bottom were crossed off, now it's just like over one. So now I've got C plus two I, C minus two I over one. And I don't wanna leave it with the I's in this situation. I would rather have this as C squared plus four. And over one is not really necessary for my answer. So I'm gonna leave my answer as just C squared plus four. And at this point, I need to go back and figure out what my domain restrictions are. So C squared minus four is the bottom. When it's factored, I got C, C plus two, C minus two. So now, in the same way, when I set those factors equal to zero, I got five or negative five. When I set these, set these factors equal to zero, I get C cannot equal negative two or two. There's my domain restriction. So both of these examples so far had polynomials, top and bottom, that were Actually, they both happen to be binomials. I could have a trinomial down there. I could have a four-term polynomial down there. Um, I just, every time I see a any polynomial with plus and minus signs, I just have to factor before I cross off. Example five below has no plus or minus signs. These are just ex, like exponential expressions. So in this case, we don't actually factor anything because you only factor a multi-term polynomial. This is a monomial. So in this case, I currently see that I've got y to the 10th on the top and bottom. So I can get rid of that on top and bottom. And then x to the fifth over x to the fourth, I can get rid of four x's but I'm gonna be left with one on the top. So I'm gonna to cancel this out and I'm gonna be left with one on the top. So currently I have negative 34 X over 17. 
Now I want to simplify this fraction, negative 34 over 17. And that's equal to, if I divide both top and bottom by 17, I would get negative 2 over 1. So this here would be equal to negative 2x over 1. So when you have exponents, you're basically just crossing off. If I have 5 in top, 4 in bottom, I have 1 left over up at the top, so I have 1 left over up at the top. If I had 10 on the top and 8 on the bottom, I'd have 2 left over up top. So that's all exponents. When you have coefficients like the negative 34 and the 17, you simplify it the same way you would simplify a regular fraction. So you just divide by 17 top and bottom to get that negative two over one. Remember when there's a one left over on bottom, it doesn't necessarily matter as much because every single number is over one. So this is actually equal to negative two X and that would be my final equation. So that's all simplifying rational expressions. In the next video, you'll be able to watch multiplying and dividing, which goes off of simplifying and is really closely linked.